Hello and welcome to XD Indexer Training from Ormax Systems. This video will teach you how to configure system settings for a new project using MotionSet. In this video, I will cover the settings, options, and PLS branch of the project tree in MotionSet. The settings branch is used to configure additional settings for both the motor and auxiliary encoder. The options branch sets up optional settings that may or may not apply to your specific application. Finally, the PLS branch allows you to set up three independent programmable limit switches. We will start by looking into the settings branch. On the left side, we have settings for the motor. During development, you may forget to take into account mechanical linkages that change the direction of the axis. This direction setting allows you to reverse the direction of all program motions without reprogramming any of them. When programming rotary applications, such as a rotary table, motion is typically commanded in the same direction over and over. Once the system has accomplished several cycles, the position reading in the drive can become quite large. To simplify the position reading in the drive, a rollover point in user units can be assigned by enabling modulo position. By setting this to 360 degrees, the position of the motor will roll over to zero every revolution, making it easy to figure out where the axis is at any given moment. Let's take a moment to see what this looks like for a rotary table application. If the table has four work cells, each at 90 degrees to one another, the motor will execute a 90 degree move repeatedly in the same direction. If this position is executed without modulo position enabled, the plot of the motor position will look like this. The start position is at 10 degrees, and each 90 degree move adds to the actual position. After several cycles, it can become difficult to determine where the motor is currently in the rotation. If we turn modulo position on, we can see the same 90 degree steps in the position, but the counter rolls over to zero when the motor reaches 360 degrees, making it clear where the motor is within one revolution. Position error fault allows you to enable a fault condition if the differences between the actual position and the commanded position is greater than this setting. This fault condition will result in the motor being disabled. Along these same lines, the position error alarm can be enabled. When the difference between the actual position and the commanded position is greater than this setting, an output can be turned on or a status bit can be read via Ethernet communication letting the user or supervisory controller know that there is excessive following error. Because it is an alarm, the motor will not be disabled as it would be for a fault. The in-position window designates the tolerance used to define when the motor has arrived in a pre-programmed position. S-curve allows for acceleration smoothing where 0% designates no acceleration smoothing and 100% designates maximum acceleration smoothing. Let's see this feature in action. With S-curve set to 0%, this is a typical motor velocity curve. If we execute the same move with 100% S-curve, the velocity profile looks like this. In some cases, S-curve can help in reducing wear and tear of mechanics connected to the motor. Maximum user parameters can be assigned to the drive here, which will globally limit speed, acceleration, and deceleration. On the right side of the screen, you can set the direction and optional rollover point for an auxiliary encoder. Monitor time constants are the settings used to log data for the digital scope or retrieval by a computer or host controller. These settings are typically left at the default. The power block enable allows you to control how long to wait between the time the enable input becomes true and power is applied to the motor. Then you can delay the enable output to ensure enough time is allotted to fully charge the bus before signaling to a host controller the indexer is enabled. Finally, if the motor has a fail-safe temperature switch, you can set the overtemp mode to generate a fault disabling the motor or generate an alarm when there is an open condition on the motor's normally closed overtemperature switch. This can protect the motor from reaching dangerous temperatures during high-duty applications. Let's look at the options branch. If your application is such that the motor will regenerate power back onto the bus, the extra energy will likely need to be dissipated into a regen resistor. By enabling regeneration, you can select a standard ORMAC regen resistor or specify some other resistor given its resistance and power rating. For vertical applications or where a motor failsafe brake is employed, this brake option enables time delays. The first brake off delay specifies how long the brake output will wait to disable the brake when the drive is first enabled, giving the bus time to charge allowing the motor torque to get to a level required to hold the load on its own. The motor off delay specifies how long the motor will stay enabled after the enable input is off to allow the brake to re-engage. During an e-stop condition, main power input to the bus will be terminated and the motor may be in a freewheeling state. 
Enabling electronic braking will allow the drive to use residual power on the bus to assist in slowing the motor. More current specified here means more braking power is available. Finally, if your application is linear, an extra layer of protection beyond the physical hardwired end of travel sensors is available with software over travel limits. For example, a linear slide with 20 inches of travel may be configured with hardware end of travel sensors one inch from either end of the actuator. Software travel limits can be assigned at 1.5 inches from either end of the actuator to give an extra half inch of buffer before reaching the physical limit of the actuator. The PLS branch allows for the configuration of up to three independent programmable limit switches. The source of a PLS can be configured as either the actual position of the motor or auxiliary encoder or the commanded position of the motor. It can be active in both directions or only in one. When the motor is moving forward, the first on position specifies when the PLS turns on and when moving in reverse when it turns off. When the motor is moving forward, the last on position specifies when the PLS turns off and when moving in reverse when it turns on. If your application calls for a PLS to be turned off after a specific amount of time, then turn off based on time allows you to program this in milliseconds. Hysteresis can be used if the motor is likely to stop near the first on or last on position to prevent the PLS from changing state unintentionally. Here is a simple PLS in action. In this plot, the green line represents the actual position of the motor, while the blue line represents the state of PLS1. When the blue line goes up, it means that PLS1 is on. Using this cursor, I can see the value of both the motor position and PLS1. Notice that this move profile is pretty simple. It starts at a motor position of 10 degrees, then we move at a constant velocity to a position of 350 degrees, dwell for 100 milliseconds, then return to 10 degrees at a constant speed, dwell for another 100 milliseconds, and then repeat. PLS1 was set up to only trigger in the forward direction, so we can see here the PLS comes on at 250 degrees and off at 325 degrees, but does not come back on during the return move. The PLS is ready to come on again during the next move forward and again does not trigger on the move back. If we simply change this aspect of the PLS, we can see the plot change accordingly. Now PLS1 comes on in both directions. The conditions for configuring the PLS functionality is very flexible. For more information, take a look at the help file. In the table of contents, go to Reference, then Setup, then PLS Timing Diagrams to see illustrations of different PLS configurations. This concludes this instructional video. For more information about how to use the XD indexer, visit us at ormec.com.